Now let's put our focus to Clausius theorem. Now Clausius theorem states that a reversible line, let us say 1, 2, can be replaced by two reversible adiabatics and one isothermal line. Okay, so let's write it down. So Clausius theorem states that a reversible process or you can say a reversible line can be replaced by two reversible adiabatics okay and one reversible isotherm okay so this is what is happening in this particular plot so you have a reversible line which is one to this black colored line and this can be replaced by two reversible adiabatics which is 1a and b2 and one isotherm which is a b okay so let's define this so you have one two as a reversible line or a process okay then we have one a and we have b2 they are reversible adiabatics they are reversible adiabatics and then we have a b a b is a reversible isotherm so this is what the replacement is okay now this replacement is done in such a way that the area below the curve 1 2 is equal to the area below the lines 1a a b and b2 okay so you can say that this replacement is done in such a way such that the area below 1 2 is equal to the area below 1 a b 2 so this means that the work done in you know both the cases the original reversible line and the replacement would be the same okay let's have a look at it so if you apply the first law onto this particular arrangement let us apply the first law first of all on the original reversible process so you have q12 which is equal to w12 plus u2 minus u1 then let's apply the first law onto these uh, three lines so you will have q1 a b2 this is equal to w 1 a b 2 plus u 2 minus u 1 so these two would be the same because energy is the property of a system it is a point function okay so you can cancel these out you can cancel these also because the areas are same so the work done would be the same so this brings us to an equation of these two things so you will have q 1 2 is equal to q 1 a b2 now what is q1 a b2 it is the sum of heat for this process for this process and for this process okay so this is q1 a plus q a b plus q b2 okay so we know that because 1 a and b2 are your reversible adiabatics so 1 a and b2 they would have no heat transfer so this becomes 0 and this becomes 0 so this gives us the final equation as q12 is equal to qab this means that the amount of heat transferred in a reversible process 1 2 is equal to the amount of heat transferred only in the reversible isothermal process which is a part of the replacement of the original process okay so i hope you understood uh, this uh, analysis now let's take this analysis of a little forward and create an entire cycle out of it so this is just one reversible process one two now this is an entire reversible cycle so this is an entire reversible cycle in the blue uh, you know line on the blue color line and then you have these you know almost vertical lines these are your isentropic lines or your reversible adiabatics 
and these almost horizontal lines are your isotherms okay so let's divide these into a little small parts such that this entire reversible cycle becomes a collection of very small small reversible carnot cycles okay so you have one carnot cycle over here so this is one carnot cycle let us assume another carnot cycle over here so these are all small small carnot cycles which make up this entire you know reversible cycle now let us say you have this uh, carnot cycle now carnot cycle is also made up of two reversible adiabatics and two reversible isotherms so you have two isotherms 1 2 and 3 4 and you have two reversible adiabatics 2 3 and 4 1 okay so these two are so this cycle is working under the limits t1 and t2 okay so at t1 you have some heat input let us say this is delta q1 because it's a very small carnot cycle and you have some heat rejection at t2 at you know delta q2 similarly for this you have some heat input at q uh, at t3 which is equal to delta q3 and some heat rejection is also there at t4 which is delta q4 now if you go about you know the first cycle and if you remember the uh, absolute temperature scale then you will have delta q1 upon t1 is equal to delta q2 upon t2 so this is for a reversible cycle now let's put the sign convention so when you put the sign convention because this is the heat value which is being lost to the surrounding this becomes negative so you'll have from this equation you'll have delta q1 upon t1 plus delta q2 upon t2 is equal to 0 so this is for one small elementary carnot cycle which is a part of you know infinite number of carnot cycles which make up this complete reversible cycle now let's apply the similar thing onto this second carnot cycle so you'll have delta q3 upon t3 plus delta q4 upon t4 is equal to 0 okay similarly you have this for all the carnot cycles which make it up okay so this means that you will have for the entire cycle the first is delta q1 upon t1 plus delta q2 upon t2 plus delta q3 upon t3 plus delta q4 upon t4 plus so on this is equal to 0 so this is what you will get for the you know all these small small Carnot cycles so if you have to generalize it for generalization this would be a cyclic integral of delta q upon t is equal to 0 so this is an important thing this is the mathematical formula for a Clausius theorem which says that the cyclic integral for the mathematical term delta q upon t is 0 for a reversible cycle okay so this is what this theorem proves so i hope you understood this entire analysis of the clausius theorem now let's take this discussion forward in the next video and talk about clausius inequality